welcome to episode 63 everyone this is another video in the basic series and uh, in this one I'll show you how to mold clear parts from UV resin I recently started a second build this is the Jackal from Hobby Boss in 35 scale and the very first step you'll see this little uh, coolant reservoir that uh, fits into the model now if you've been following this uh, on Instagram you'll know that uh, my initial plan was to um, was to paint this little styrene part. Uh, it has to be uh, clear with a blue liquid inside. And uh, unfortunately, Hobby Boss decided to to just uh, mold this in the regular type of tan styrene as the rest of the kit. And uh, obviously, this this will need to change now. The uh, the painted one looks okay-ish. However, one of my hobby friends gave me the fantastic idea to uh, go ahead and mold this little part in uh, clear UV resin and that's something I'll be showing you in this video. To do the physical molding I used blue stuff from Green Stuff World. They certainly love their stuff. Basically this is uh, four blocks of uh, thermoplastic. Basically plastic that uh, becomes uh, uh, pliable, malleable, once it's heated up there's some uh, basic instructions uh, on on the on the leaflet and there you can see a little block of plastic and this has some amazing properties so uh, that's the molding covered but uh, how do we get the clear stuff in there for the clear stuff i used uv resin now this is absolutely magic guys this is a liquid that uh, when exposed to uv light uh, hardens and uh, definitely a very useful uh, uh, product to, to have on your hobby bench. It comes in a bottle and uh, there's a number of ways you can harden this. Uh, one of them is uh, this UV flashlight. It's called a scorpion light. Uh, you can hunt scorpions with this. You can also use regular sunlight and I'll show you another method that I used in this case. Guys now I had to give this two tries and uh, I also included my mistakes so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. In the, uh, in the first attempt, I followed the uh, instructions uh, on, the, on the back page of this little uh, leaflet and it says to uh, heat the, uh, the block in, uh, in, in warm water for three minutes. Now, do take note, I didn't boil the water. This is just hot water that uh, I poured into the good old canteen cup. Now, to avoid burning my, uh, my cutting pad on my bench, uh, I used this uh, little silicone mat, very useful uh, item to have. And uh, I now dip the, uh, the block of thermoplastic into the, uh, the hot water, something like that, and uh, left it for three minutes as instructed in the, uh, in the booklet. Once this is uh, ready, it's very pliable now, and you can remove this from the water. And you can obviously see this is my first time dealing with uh, with, uh, with this specific product, the way I'm battling there. So how do you use this? Roll this into a little ball uh, with the correct size so you can mold your part inside it. And you can see it's very pliable at this stage while it's hot. And uh, now I simply take my little uh, uh, coolant tank and press this into the ball. Now, as I said earlier, this is uh, my first attempt and it's around about here where I made my first mistake because I didn't leave the part in there and uh, I didn't allow time for the thermoplastic to harden again. I just removed it straight away and uh, of course what happened there is uh, the plastic was still uh, pliable and uh, this little hollow just collapsed in on itself. However, let me show you the rest of the process. I now add the, uh, the UV resin, a little bit of that, there we go. That should be sufficient and uh, I now place this inside a uh, UV sterilizer now this is one of those weird COVID era um, purchases that I made just to try and clean our cell phones the Mrs. Nye however it will uh, produce UV light and uh, it will harden UV, uh, UV resin so there we go this was the first attempt as I said the unsuccessful one and uh, as you can see the uh, thermoplastic uh, mold hasn't hardened yet and uh, the little part that I tried to mold is also a flop and you can see there's quite a few bubbles inside this so obviously I need to rethink my method 
Now, with the second attempt, um, I uh, allowed the uh, the thermoplastic to cool first, and only then did I remove the uh, the styrene part. And you can see there, this is much uh, this is a much better mold. This has hardened a bit, and uh, this is now ready to take the um, the UV resin. Just squeeze a little bit in there, perhaps a little bit more. And this time around, to avoid the bubbles, I also used um, this, uh, this tool that I made myself just to make sure that I get rid of any air bubbles inside that liquid. So this is now ready to uh, go into the hardening process again. And uh, it goes back into the UV sterilizer under the UV light. This gives about 10 minutes of UV light. I actually gave it um, two runs in this uh, little device from Samsung. And uh, just to make dead sure, I placed this uh, where there's an abundance of UV light outside, of course, in direct sunlight. And uh, I left it there for about an hour or two just to make sure that it's, uh, it's hardened. So this is attempt two. It looks a lot better this time. The, uh, the mold is also quite hard. And uh, in this case, uh, I decided to cut away the mold around the, uh, the molded part. And there you can see absolutely gorgeous that is uh, the result that I was after in the first uh, instance and uh, I certainly can't complain about that even the little uh, the cap is visible there next I removed the excess uh, resin this is uh, soft enough to cut away with a pair of scissors and there we go perfect copy of the original styrene part now this has so many applications that I can think of few other things I did in this case just to uh, mark the uh, fluid level more accurately than I, I did the first time when I painted this and uh, to paint the, uh, the blue coolant I used transparent blue from uh, Vallejo. This is airbrushed onto the part. There we go, something like this. Next I hand painted in the uh, little rubber cap. And there's the end result. Certainly looks a lot more convincing than uh, the first uh, pure styrene one that I tried to paint by hand. The cool thing about this, uh, this blue stuff is of course that uh, it's reusable. Um, so once you're done with this, just pop it back into the hot water for three minutes and uh, you can then uh, uh, reuse this at the latest stage. This is certainly very uh, useful stuff. And thank you to my friend George for uh, pointing out this, uh, this very useful uh, technique. This is the first time I did this and uh, definitely something I'll keep in mind in future. Folks, now if you're in South Africa, these uh, products are available on uh, the Supernova Studio uh, website. My sponsors for the gorgeous uh, Tacom uh, Apache You'll see there's the, the blue stuff. It comes in four and eight blocks. And while you're there, also pick up some of this epoxy putty. My understanding from Lindy is that um, the, uh, the war ammo guys, the, the miniature painters love, uh, love this. There's the UV resin. And uh, again, all the instructions are there. And uh, I can certainly agree with those, uh, those uh, reviews at the side. This is a very useful product. Guys, this is it then for video 63, another one of the, the basic ones. I hope you found this uh, very useful. I certainly did. I learned a lot in this process and uh, looking forward to seeing everyone in the next video. Thank you for watching.